Yeah, check it out, man. This is your boy Akon, and you got to lock right here to all hip hop. Don't change that dial, baby. You know what time it is. What's going on, world? It's your man Chuck Creek, Mayor, aka Jigsaw, here at One World Studios. We are here with a international yet domestic superstar. My man Akon in the building. What's good? What's going on? How you time? doing? Amazing. Yeah, yeah. Good to see you, man. <laughs> so you got the, you know, you got the mm -hmm. super Michael Jackson. I don't even want to call it Michael Jackson because it's your it's own iconic. thing. It's iconic. It's iconic. Yeah. Okay. Is that the name of the album? No, no, no. The name of the album is not guilty. Not guilty. Coming in February. Look out for it. Okay. Okay. Yes, 2025. Looking good already. Um, <laughs> you got a beautiful day. Yeah, new song, yeah. new record. It's an inspirational joint. Yeah. Can you talk about that a little bit? Like, like why, why'd you go to in, in this direction? Man, I just, I just felt like it was necessary. You know, as I was, as I got back from Africa, listening to the music, mm -hmm. the vibration of music was just so low. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Then I was watching all these clippings of all these drill rappers dying, mm. and all coming from lyrics and music. You know yeah, what I mean? Right. I'm seeing Rico cases of mm. artists getting locked up for 25 years or better because of lyrics and music. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, we got to change the narrative of all of this, man. It's just not, music is supposed to bring positive, innovative, you know, memories of what you experience, and it shouldn't be something that should be as a tool to get rid of a culture. Yeah, yeah. Now, who, who is that to blame? Like, like Thug just got off. Right. Um, but it, you know, barely. I mean, he pled out. Right. He yeah. didn't get off. He didn't get now off. He got True. Fifteen years. It feels like he got off. I mean, fifteen we, we years we of probation. Won't, won't it's, it's, <laughs> only, it's only off if you go fifteen years Ooh, without that, violating. And fifteen that's years a long, long time, time. <laughs> man. Listen. So believe me, we're all gonna contribute to helping keeping Thug out of there. Yeah. Yeah. So technically, yeah. So he's he's essentially on house arrest mm -hmm. for for that long. But but his lyrics and stuff was on trial. Right. Right. Um, I think he got off on a technicality because Nicki Minaj wrote some of those lyrics that were in question. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the things that helped him get off. But ultimately, it was his lyrics. Right. Um, a lot of people argued art, black art, protected, things of that sort. I mean, you've gone back and forth in your career. Yep. Um, do you feel that now we need to think differently? I think we should always have thought differently. Mm. You know, I think we take we do kind of take the art for granted and oftentimes we forget the environment that we're actually in. Like right yeah. like we've never been in a position where when we did things it was perceived or uh, uh received from a perspective of positivity. Yeah. We always have to over do things or do it above and beyond to be recognized. Like even now, we're constantly right. protesting about things that we've actually contributed to that we don't get credit for. Yeah. Right? So being the fact that we're in that situation where we actually come out the gate on the negative, we should always think worst case scenario. Mm -hmm. We should come in with plan A, plan B, but for the most part, always try to figure out how do we enter the marketplace from a perspective of a culture where we are and always have been under the attack, right? So mm -hmm. we can't look at it to be so naive to think that because we're great at something that we'll be credited to be great for it. Right. Does that make sense? Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, because, well, I mean, think about it. Like, okay. I use myself as a prime example because I hate to speak on other people's situations. Right. So when you look at and the reason why musically I've always dodged or never paid attention to stats, accolades of that nature because it throws me off focus. Mm -hmm. Right. And mm -hmm. I can easily find myself in a very depressed state if I was focused on credibility and credit. Right. 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 Because I can't really name how many artists that I've probably put on mm -hmm. or signed mm -hmm. or how many hit records that I've had on the billboard charts or you know propelled other people's careers right I've never received the Grammy yeah that's crazy. right now nominations is fine but receiving is one thing yeah naturally no awards for, for that matter really? but one which was American Music Awards okay so my whole career 20 years in the game I've only walked away with one actual award yeah. that I can say was given to me by the people, and that was right. the People's Choice Award. Right. So that was the most important award for me, no matter what, anyway, because yeah. the people chose it. But if it came from an aspect of uh, business mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. being nominated by a group of people in the back that may vote for who you are because of political purposes, right? I would never get it because I never, you know, like my music was never for that. It was always for the people. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. So when you look at the the music, I mean, the global music awards, like the the World Music Awards, for instance, which is all also judged by the people. I got 
countless amount of awards. So I knew that what I did was for the people. Yeah. So anything that related to the people, that's how I was always justifying my success because wherever I went in the world, people knew who I was. Mm -hmm. Stadiums was packed out. And mm -hmm. I knew, okay, that was my award there. Yeah. But now for the aspect of just people that do music for accolades or things that they may feel that needs to be publicly publicized, and then you don't get that credit, you can drive you nuts. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. it could drive you crazy. You yeah. know, it's no different from, you know, the, the, the situations that Kanye had to burst out just to be recognized because mm -hmm. he felt that those things needed to be, like, said or needed to be... Um, uh, 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 you could say uh, promoted to an extent, right? Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you, do you want those accolades? Like, are you looking for them now? Do no, I never cared about them. You, actually, so you don't care about a Grammy? I can care less about okay. any of that because the people is who justifies my yeah. success. Right. That's why I'm still here. Yeah, of course, of course. You know what I mean? As long as the people say you are who they are to them, you're gonna always be here. Your longevity will always extend the test of time, yeah. and that's how you really know. Okay. Now back to the back to the the issue around lyrics. You know, in my opinion there's always the uh idea that the uh, there's only a couple ways to be successful. Right. There's only a couple ways in and it seems like you know the criminal what I don't know what you want to call it, the gritty reality, criminality, whatever. Right. Um aggressive music, whatever you want to call it seems to be the way to doing that. Um now obviously it's changed a lot. You know, you mentioned drill, people dying. Oh, it's gotten worse. It didn't, yeah. it didn't get, it didn't, I think it changed for the worse. But I think it all depends on the person and what they consider success to be. Well, okay. You follow Fair enough. Fair enough. I think, I think well, the, uh, the business that we're in, it's a bandwagon riding business. Mm -hmm. Whatever's working, everybody hops on it. Mm -hmm. So I remember there was a time where we frowned upon, you know, gangster music. Mm. It, it was a time where mm -hmm. music was all positive. You know, it was all yeah. about protesting. It was all about everybody representing the Afrocentric perspective mm -hmm. of us and empowering black people, right? Yeah. And then it went into gangster rap, you yeah. know, when NWA introduced it. And that spoke to a whole generation of people that was going through the struggle, that was being harassed by the cops, and there was brutality all over mm -hmm. the place that wasn't being noticed, right? Yeah. But it was still positive at that time, yeah. right? Because it was about telling the story of the environment that the world or white America didn't know anything about. Yeah. It wasn't something that, okay, it was a thing to be gangster to the point where you had to glorify it. Right, yeah. The OGs would still see you on the corner and be like, boy, get your ass home and do your homework. What the fuck you doing here? Yeah. You got basketball skills or you nigga, you got, you're an honor roll student. Yeah. I don't want to see you on this block no more. Yeah. So even though the environment was still uh, aggressive from a perspective of survival, the OG mm -hmm. still had that honor amongst thieves to know that these kids can't be caught up in this. We're only here because we don't have no other choice. Yeah. Whereas as those guys got locked up or most of them passed away, died through the streets or whatever the case may be, the the next generation who was raised by single parents, most likely by the mother or the grandparent, yeah. they couldn't raise men. Yeah. Uh, right? So yeah. they became the ones that actually became more part of the streets from a sense of not survival because they was bought into it, but out of fear. Mm -hmm. So then mm -hmm. the gangsterism became more of a a, a a protective shield over yourself to where yeah. you had to be hard so nobody don't try you. Right. Right? So yeah. it was almost one of those things where, okay, now if you gangster, it was a good thing because nobody wouldn't step, you wouldn't get robbed, you wouldn't yeah. get tried. So everybody at that point used that protective shield to become what they really was. And then when yeah. social media came, right. <laughs> It made everybody gangster. Yeah. Everybody became what they thought at that time was cool mm -hmm. until they got to the point where you was now being tested for real because social media allowed people to be exposed. Yeah. So in order to not get exposed, you had to truly show that you are who you say you were on the record. Mm -hmm. So then that transformed into people actually trying to do exactly what they said. Yeah. It's, it's a mess. It's a mess. <laughs> So that's the transformation. So yeah. now you got real people dying in real life because somebody said I got bodies. Yeah. Now these kids are smoking each other on record, on social media, doing life just to prove a point. Mm -hmm. Then their whole life is messed up. So yeah. it's because of just lack of guidance. Like, you know, I, and, I, and, and to answer your question, we do play a part. Yeah. Because it's not like we don't know better. Yeah. We is it, is it, is it, is it you know? our generation's fault? Is it like, did, 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 was there a, point where we could have steered this in a different direction uh, no i think there's always a point where we can steer it in a different direction can we now we definitely can it's never too late okay i just think that people have to be willing to 
take the initiative and also have the courage to be seen in a light less than what they assume themselves to be. Because mm. everybody's doing it to perceive to be a big to be bigger than who they are, right? Yeah. So our ego play way of a bigger role in the decisions that we make. Right. Even though we know, okay, we shouldn't do it, we'll look corny. Right. Because we'll look corny, we won't do it. Right. Even right, though we right. know it needs to be done. Yeah. But but <laughs> now but now we got people they want to preach to the young people, but they'll they'll always remind you that right. yeah, but yeah, but back in my day, I used to right. We but, would clear the block or whatever. I mean, because like it, yo, it, bro, it goes back to right. credibility again, right? Yeah, so yeah. The young guys is like, okay, why am I listening to you and you ain't never been through it? Right. So they right. have to remind them that hold on, now I'm only telling you this because I have been through it. Mm -hmm. But again, your approach is is not because they went through it and they need that credit. It's almost like. All right, little nigga, don't try me now. Right. But I'm gonna tell you right now, don't do it. But, but if they you know, back in the day, but if they don't do go it. through it, so, <laughs> they but then if they don't go through it, <laughs> then we we like I ain't right. out of here. Like, yeah. So it's a it's, so a, it's, it's, it's a catch twenty two. It's, it's really but they don't know they are, the mentality. Go again. But they don't know when to say, hey, hey, let's let's pull back, let's hold, let's slow down right here. Right, right. I, I think that's the thing. But it's also okay to say, I'm scared. <laughs> It's okay, Facts. bro. Like, guess what? If there, if fear, if fear is not within you, you're not human. Uh, yeah. Fear is actually reminds you that you're human. Yeah, yeah. It reminds you that there are things in life that you should fear. Yeah. And because there's no spirituality within the household no more, that changes everything. Because guess what? We all came up fearing God. Yeah. We were all God fearing men, and that made us say, okay, do the right thing or the wrong thing. You're like, man, I ain't doing the wrong thing because yeah. I'm gonna get punished for it. Yeah. So mm -hmm. because there's lack of fear today, these kids are doing any and everything because they, they feel like there's no retribution from it. And when I was coming up, the fear of God was more, you was fearful of that more than you was fearful of the police or anything else in life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's, I think that's what we've been missing. We're missing that spirituality that used to guide us, that reminded us of what to fear. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Let's talk, let's, you know, you have, new music coming out um algorithms are also a factor into this to me mm. um youtube and views and man i don't i still don't likes. understand it. i still don't understand what that is it drives it drive like so give you a good I'm example trying. you know with all hip-hop we might promote we might publish a really positive article right someone did something good in the community mm -hmm. you look at the numbers you're like and this is just regular media you right. look at the numbers, you're like, ah, okay. Post somebody getting killed, the numbers are Spiked, up. Right. On on social media, it's completely, I don't know, a thousand X. Right. You know, um, likes, algorithms. And then and then and then at the end of the day, whoever creates the algorithm, whoever the, owns the platform guides it too. Right. So you might have I mean, I, I think, you know, Elon Musk and Twitter X or whatever is the best example. example. Mm -hmm. You know, you know that he's tilting it way this way. You can see that. Right. But it happens in all of them, in my opinion. Same with music. So, right. so your song might not get as much views or whatever you want to call it as um, someone shaking their ass, naked right. women, whatever. Right. Um, how do you wrestle do you do you i mean you're a, i you're, honestly don't i yeah, honestly you, but you're I'm, here now though yeah I'm, but would I'm, you if you were new i mean that's the thing like i'm still trying to understand what that word algorithm actually means mm -hmm. and me like because i'm ignorant to it it's probably what gave me my success now because think about it if we look at the song akon's beautiful day it's probably the most positive song in urban music right now mm -hmm. But yet it's already broken all the records okay from a positive perspective mm -hmm. you know the number one record on TikTok. The mm -hmm. number one shared and creates on TikTok right now and on Instagram. Like so when you when you say that, the reason why it confuses me because I've seen records from artists that's been around the whole time I had my hiatus hiatus and they're they're still at the top of their game. Like the weekend, for instance. Mm -hmm. Our numbers versus the weekend's numbers, his single and my single, it's not even it's apples and oranges. Like we surpassed him so far ahead mm -hmm. and mind he's been credible and probably credible get given credit to be the number one artist in the world right mm -hmm. now but right. his single is not even competing with mine yeah and that's algorithm right wise you look at the numbers mm -hmm. it says everything and we didn't do nowhere half the things that the majors did for him right because i'm completely independent okay under convict culture but that just goes to show that 
what the people want and what they're yearning and thirsting for outweighs algorithm on any given day. People want positivity mm -hmm. right now. Like people want to see, like they want to feel good. They want to yeah. hear feel good music. They want mm -hmm. they want something outside of the norm that everybody's chasing to think that that's what's hot or that's what's happening. And what's happening with artists, they're just going about what they think is going to work because it worked for everybody else. Yeah. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, fair enough. So I, I think this is a good lesson for everybody to learn, but also it's also give them hopefully the courage to do something different because what's different is always going to ca crash through the algorithm. And probably mm -hmm. the reason why mine mm -hmm. is working is because nobody else is doing it. I'm the yeah. only one doing it. So yeah. it yeah. it gives a, it opens a lane just like a a clear lane for it to work. Yeah. No, no, you you got a good point. But what about the fl flip side of that? Right. Um the the reality of 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 what we're con what we're dealing with in right. in this world and in this country is really oh crazy crazy yeah. it's insanity it's uns insane is there is there a space for it there too i mean i i agree with it you is it actually is for for to address those things it's a hundred percent room for it and again the reason why it's not happening is goes back to fear mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. america's always been driven and by fear yeah right? and when there's things that you know needs to be done and you stand aside and watch and it, nothing happens, the cycle going to constantly continue. Yeah. So, I mean, you, just as a culture, we have to know that there's certain things that we have to get behind and put our full interest and, and energy behind because what we believe is only going to happen through voting and it's going to happen through action. Mm. That's it. Yeah. Other than that, it's not, yeah. it's, it's just going to be an, un, it's going to be a cycle we're going to continue to talk about you know, we're going to sit there and complain about. Yeah. <laughs> bro. I keep telling people. Like, until we get up and do something, yeah. it's not, I mean, it is what it is. I may, listen, I, you know, you talk about fear. I went to my old neighborhood where I'm originally from, and I hit the streets passing out literature and, 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 and trying to tell people to vote. Mm -hmm. This ain't the best place you want to be any at any point in your time. In no, your, no, yeah, it's you know, a tough it's, time. Yeah, it's yeah. not safe. I got warned many times. Big Mama was like, <laughs> you be safe. Right. <laughs> you said it four times. Right, that's scary when Big Mama say And then OG, OG was like, yeah, somebody gave me the history of shooting in wow. the zone. I was like, all right, man. But the point is, is this is important to me. Right. And our people, we need to understand that this is it. This is yeah. So anyway, I'm glad we're on the same page because there's a lot of us out here that's not on the same page. And and I think it, I've never look. We're old enough to have seen many presidents, right. many leaders, many troubling times, and I've never felt this strongly that this is not the right person, mm -hmm. you know. And I'm not trying to beat the dead horse or nothing, but this is like a existential crisis. Like this could be it. <laughs> but I'm, I'm, I'm gonna tell you one thing that may break your horse's back. Okay. No matter who's in that office, if us as people aren't united, it won't make a difference. Okay. Let's talk about that. It won't make a difference. Let's talk okay. about that because America, um, Black America, is more diverse now than it's ever been. Right. We had, you know, when I went to college, everybody was Black American, African American. Mm -hmm. um, there was, I mean, there were only a few people from even like the islands. You right. know, there was, I mean, at least from where I grew up. Now, granted, I wasn't in New York City or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, where do you feel we are now? Um, I, I feel like we're we're very divided. No, I think we are divided as people. Yeah. Um, we are divided as a country. But I think these kind of things need to happen for us to see the true potential of where we can go. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, they always say there's always a storm before the calm, right? We're in the middle of the storm at this point, right? But for the most part, we all just have to be more human. I think that's the part that we're actually missing because everybody's so focused on themselves as to how they're going to survive. Yeah. If they don't think about yeah. if everybody survived, you're not, your survival is intimate. It's automatic, right? Uh -huh. But if you're the only one surviving, then there's a lot of people that's not, then you become a target. Uh -huh. Right. And I think the moment we become selfless, problems will be solved a lot simpler and a lot easier. And then a lot of the problems will be something that won't be a challenge for us because we're thinking of others as we're thinking of ourselves. Mm -hmm. So I think the lack of selfishness is what's going to solve the problem mm -hmm. on a global scale. Yeah. But we have to, again, think about each other from a unity perspective before we can even make an advancement to the future. Yeah. Which is why 
Akon's Beautiful Day is the perfect thing to talk about. <laughs> Beautiful Day, my favorite song right now. <laughs> Definitely. I listened to it a hundred times on the way to this. No, interview. absolutely, man. Definitely. But I, I'm going to tell you that uh, the uh, the damn algorithm did not send me the song. That sucks. <laughs> I hate that. I'm keeping it Don't a buck stop with counting you. on the algorithm. You can't count on the algorithm. Well, the old days are over. Right. The days where uh, publicists calls you up and says, hey, man, we got a new song. Right. You know, come to the office and listen to it. Like, those are gone. Right. You know, I got an email. My inbox is full of freaking everything. I don't even know if I got an email. Man. That's crazy. You know what I mean? So it's, it's just different. It's just different. No, it's, it's different. I mean, but just to under, just so you understand the magnitude of where we at with this song right now, mm -hmm. it's the number one song on TikTok. Mm -hmm. It's the most shared song on TikTok yeah. with the most creates on TikTok as Dope. well. It's the biggest growing song right now. We debuted on the Billboard charts at 27. And yeah. we're going to be number one by the time the, the holidays actually kick in. Without okay. Question. Good, good. Yeah. Internationally, how how are you being? I mean, you, you've got that duality, right? That mm -hmm. African and that American. Right. You know. It's Africa in America. Right. <laughs> I'm Africa in America. Yeah, we're too, we're right African way. in America. <laughs> That's why they call you African American. Right, right. You're African first. That's a fact. Um, <laughs> how, how are you being, you know, how is it over there? Oh, man, it's unbelievable over there. Yeah, yeah it's unbelievable, especially since we've been now kind of inviting everybody back home. Mm -hmm. You know, we got that, you know, um, that festival that we do in Ghana every year, yeah. the year of return. Yeah. So people are now opening their eyes to it. You know, more people are taking trips you know, to to Africa. A lot of women are getting flown over to Africa these days. Dude over. <laughs> <laughs> that's, uh, that, that's another right, story. Right, right, right. right, right, right. So, that's a fact. You know, I missed the first one. I was mad, man. I I, I didn't plan properly. Right. To go. No, don't worry. You got time. Yeah, yeah. You got time. But I'm already. I'm set for next year. That's what's up. Yeah, definitely, that's what's up. definitely. Um, can you? There's a lot of American. Folks feel like Africans don't like us. Right. Is that is this, that's is not this, a stereotype? Yeah, yeah, that's 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 definitely a stereotype. That's okay. for sure a stereotype. I okay. think those are all little agendas that's kind of planted to mm -hmm. keep us divided as well too. Yeah, okay, you I'm glad I mean? to hear that. And I and I think no matter where you go, you're gonna find some snobby Africans or snobby Americans mm -hmm. towards each other. Yeah, but mm -hmm. I don't think those are the guys that you utilize to 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 paint a picture that would you know prevent you from actually going to find your own culture and your history good yeah i met an african king this year oh did you uh -huh. he prayed over me oh that's amazing man. yeah did you feel it? hell is yeah it i felt it is that's it the <laughs> second best thing since baptism that's what me. i'm talking about <laughs> you know what i'm saying that's that's serious that's i ain't amazing. even told nobody about that till no, just now wonderful. yeah um can i ask you about the akon city is that going to happen do you think as as we get closer to towards that, that information i bring more out okay you know my, my biggest thing was i promoted it way 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 too early okay because it was out of the excitement yeah and of course anything that exciting that will change a culture people will naturally want to know what's yeah. happening right now assuming that it's already happening but yeah. it was in a process of creating okay so, so it's we, not done now. no no nowhere near it. it's a city okay good good yeah. i'm glad man because you know they compared it to wakanda and i'm i'm a comic nerd love black panther i mean it that's not obviously that's fantasy but right. still yeah. Right, right, right. Anything even remotely close. No, absolutely. All right, that's cool. Um, are you still into crypto at all? Are you still? Nah, I, I kind of, I kind of left the crypto space. Yeah. Because the area where I was entering in mm -hmm. was a little too political for me to be a part of. Yeah. Yeah. Well, <laughs> let's, that, let's just say that's that a way. safe way to put it. <laughs> that's in fact the last time I met you. Well, yeah, I think, uh, yeah, in yeah, Hollywood. We was promoting it there. Yeah, yeah. We was promoting it. It was heavily. a good day, though. It I was, was happy. It that really day. was. It really was. Yeah, yeah, no, that's what's up. <laughs> are, you, are you thinking about any other emerging technologies? You know, are you, you know, I think when you start talking about um, Wakanda or anything with black folks, we have right. to think ahead. Yeah. We're always ahead. No, we, yeah. that's the thing. We're always so ahead. And me, the way I think, I think so futuristic. But I've also learned a, a, an amazing lesson, too, because you can't really speak out into the universe what you're thinking about or what you're planning mm. on doing until it's already done. Yeah. So now what I'm doing is I'm going to get it done first and then I promote it. Yeah. Okay. So just know I got a lot going on in this brain. Okay. Okay. <laughs> good, 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 good. I'm glad to hear that. I'm glad to hear that. I'm going to have to hit you up offline. Cause there you we, go. 
<laughs> you know, we're still in the technology space. You know, we I used the AI to talk about all hip hop, and I was like, "Yo, tell me, tell me about all hip hop." And they were just like, "Yeah, all hip hop, this, all hip hop, that." They've been adaptable to uh, all the changes and technology and all that. I was like, "Okay, AI, we still here." <laughs> now, for... AI is a powerful tool. It's gonna yeah. be very, very like I believe that it's gonna be very beneficial for us in the future. AI, absolutely, yeah, one hundred percent. Um, do, do do you fear anything regarding? Music and AI? Nah, I think it's only going to grow bigger. Yeah. And I think the one thing that people fear about AI is it being out of control and them not being able to control it, right? Yeah. That's only because they don't have the information on it. Anything that you don't really know much about, you're going to fear naturally, right? But yeah. just understand that a computer only does what a human programs it to do. Right. It's not going to do yeah. more than what it doesn't know how. It, don't, it, don't, it won't know what to do unless you program it. Yeah. So it's not the AI or the technology you should be afraid of. It's really the person programming it. Yeah. And that's that's actually my fear. Because <laughs> I think yeah. some people. That's the only thing you should fear. Yeah. Right, right. Because they already have movies where AI has like rights and <laughs> bots have like babies. <laughs> it's, just it's just a movie. <laughs> I don't know, man. Elon Musk, I, you know, he's he's looking at movies and trying to make the stuff in the movies. That's what's right. happening now. I mean, think about everything that's happened now. It's all was in the movies first. Yeah. I mean, yeah, from FaceTime true. audio, that was yeah. on the Jetsons. To, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, driving cars by themselves. It's all happening. I saw yeah. the cartoons. So yeah, just true. pay attention because what's in the movies, sometimes we'll kind of predict what's happening in the future. Okay, okay. Um. As far as the album is concerned, um, I know it's not here till February, right. but what can you give us on that? The album is going to be one of those albums I think is going to change, hopefully, the face of how music is presented okay. and kind of bring it back to not only the old way of how we used to distribute music, but also mm -hmm. create a more futuristic perspective of it and an approach. Because mm -hmm. I think right now, everything is based on singles. Yeah, Everybody come out with a single as a single, because there's so much fear that, okay, you come out with an album, it may not work, or that's not the way to go. But mm -hmm. what made music so amazing was that you came with an experience. Mm -hmm. You came with a body of work. There mm -hmm. was a theme attached to it. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I want to bring those days back. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I'm always, I'm even going into the point where I'm putting out a section where when I do announce the album, I know how we are. Like, People aren't as patient as they would like to be. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, we nigga, we impatient in the month. We want yeah. the album now. We don't want right. to wait till the end of February to get it. Facts. So I'm, 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 I'm gonna open up the doors for people to actually be able to go take it back to the old days where you can actually buy the physical copy. Okay, good. If you want to get it before the release date. Oh, okay. So I'll be announcing that. That's good money too. Well too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, what's your favorite album of your albums? Out of oof, I don't man. It would probably be the one that's about to drop. Okay. To be honest, but if it's if I had to pick one out of the ones that already came out, I don't, I don't think I could pick one. But I can mm. tell you the one that actually gave me the most, the one that probably meant the most was Trouble, the first album. Okay. Yeah. Because of the environment and how it was made, yeah. like you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that that album saved my life. Yeah. Mm. How um how long did you do? How long were you locked up for? Uh, it depends. If I'm if I'm adding all the dates up okay all right all right the total <laughs> it amount a matter, it, ain't a matter of, it ain't a matter of that one time yeah the one t but the one the last time i was locked up which was six months is what changed my life okay because i knew at that moment yeah okay this ain't the life that i'm right right live. six right. months is six yeah. months is a long time but it's a skid bid for a, listen, some, you know for someone three weeks was a long time right, right. three weeks i was done <laughs> right. now imagine staying Five weeks later, right? I mean, five months after that, yeah. bro, it was, it was, it was, because uh, no, I don't know how people do it again. Yeah, no, it's not gonna ever happen again. In fact, I went to, I went with Styles P to Rikers Island, right? After he got out of jail, he mm -hmm. was, you know, going back to, you know, do community service type right. performance. And I was like, nah, this is crazy. No, nah, that's crazy. That's yeah. actually how I broke locked up. We actually Rikers was the first. Uh, jail that we actually performed it in and we went out to do all the other uh, tri-state um, you know facilities but boy just coming out and being free yeah and then when you go back in yeah. <laughs> the best part was knowing that I can leave whenever I was ready right to go like yeah. and also knowing that okay I'm going through here to entertain these niggas but I'm about, I'm actually gonna leave yeah but yeah. bro it felt my, my heart drop knowing that damn these niggas can't even leave yeah. after I can go home Mm -hmm. Order some white castles. Mm -hmm. <laughs> castles. <laughs> we they love the S at the end. Here. Yeah, nah, it's crazy. Oh, Rikers man. is crazy. Yeah, it's, it's 
Um, you've dealt with a lot of hip hop in your in your career. Did you ever try to rap? Um, nah, never. I, you I don't sometimes think I'm singing a rap. I'm cadence. Yeah, but yeah, that's the thing because the the kind of lyrics at the time, it it didn't cater to R and B. And mm. what I was going through wasn't R&B topics. Right. Yeah. So I just sang about what rappers rapped about because I was going through what rappers were going through. I just yeah. happened to be a singer, right? So yeah. it became more hard and B than it was R&B. Mm. Okay. You know? Yeah. Who who what would you say what would you say hip hop the rappers specifically brought to the table then? Like I think they gave me the 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 audience mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because i ain't gonna lie to you like when i first dropped locked up it was released without styles p on it mm. and we had a hard time getting it played on the radio you know um bet thought it was too urban mm -hmm. and interesting enough mtv didn't think it was urban enough oh that's crazy so i couldn't get no really no real play because it would it couldn't be identified as a specific genre right you know you got this hardcore hip-hop beat on it and then yeah. you got this african singing about something that ain't normally sang, but in the melodies that people weren't really used to. Yeah. It was they didn't know how to they didn't know what genre it was in. Yeah. So and then DJs had a challenge because they didn't know what to play before to play after it. Yeah. yeah. So I mean the missing piece was Styles on it. Cause when Styles came on it and from the top, then it was like, okay, it's a hip hop record. Right. But then when I came in, it just made it a an interesting, different style mm -hmm. of hip-hop yeah you know what yeah. i mean yeah so, yeah yeah definitely, definitely yeah so that that's when i realized okay the best way for me to introduce my music to this audience is to make sure i'm really close to hip-hop because mm -hmm. hip-hop identifies what i am yeah yeah you know what i mean that's why i did so many hip-hop features i was even to the point where i was even labeled a hip-hop artist yeah yeah you know what i mean yeah you um you have some songs right what do you think like i listen to some of these songs I'm like man I can't play this no more. <laughs> like it's kind of it's kind of rough. Like man, I listen you... to them songs. I be like, because you know what's interesting is sometimes you you go through the comments and you listen to the fans and they be like, man, we want some of that old Akon, man, bring right. that uh, that old Akon. Mm -hmm. And I can tell those are the people that just started listening to me because mm -hmm. the real Akon fans know, okay, he's the kind of artist that sings uh, sings about his experiences. Because when you listen to the first album, as dark as it was, mm -hmm. to the Freedom album. It goes from dark to light. Yeah. Like you can tell every stage of my life, career, yeah. and the change in me. Mm -hmm. You can mm -hmm. literally hear it in the music, right? Yeah. So, the way the old, I can I could never find myself in a position where I can ever give them back the old Akon because yeah. I have to be in that position yeah. to give you that type of music again, mm -hmm. you know. But I was able to find the perfect line between the two on this new album. Yeah. That's why I said this is probably gonna be the best album I release. Dope, dope. And yeah. it'll be 20 years from the ver the very first album. Yeah. That'll be Which crazy. Is crazy. Yeah, crazy. Yeah. So I know we have a, 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 a wrap up because you have other places places to be. But I have a question and I, I hope this doesn't offend you. No, nah, nothing offends But me. you went, <laughs> <laughs> man, he's the watchdog, watchdog. <laughs> Um, my that's my dog, my dog, my dog too, my dog too. But um, your hair was a topic of discussion, right? Uh, oh, that was a topic of discussion forever, right? Forever. Okay. Right. Um, I see you. You know, got the fresh baldy, the new look, the new look, the new look. <laughs> <laughs> see, we had you in here before, but yo, I'm glad you can laugh at it, man. But bro, it's not not to laugh about, right? Man. Like it's okay. Yeah. That's you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, I, I, but I, I, I see what happened in the beginning. You know, I had a lot of dark skinned guys, you know, jealous of the waves. Right, right. <laughs> you, know, you know, that's what it was. It was the waves. Now, I you know, I took the waves off. Yeah. But that was that was a moment in time when I had a surgery. Okay. You know what I mean? So, and I had a, a piece on my head, mm -hmm. which I actually about to put up for sale because I realized how many guys mm -hmm. actually, actually had it. Yeah. A lot of the celebrities that you actually admire right now to this day got it. Uh -huh. Nobody really never knew. Yeah. But yeah. it's a big, big business. And well, I'm about to actually get into it. You about, okay, you about to get into that? I'm about to get into, get into, that. into it for sure. Yeah. You, you, about, you about to see some hair club for me and comedy, you know. Okay. Just popping up. I appreciate that, though. Yeah. Hey, man, it's a different day and time. We can do that now. No, nah, bro, it's a new time. It's nothing to be like, bro, the problem with people is they're so afraid to be in their own truth. Uh -huh. And I feel like the moment you're dishonest with yourself, bro, life is gonna be hard to go through. You can't, you, you, you can't, you can't manage through life being something that you're not. Yeah, you just can't. Yeah, yeah. you know what I mean. And me, I, I'm, I'm like, I, I'm, I'm so happy with who I am and who I am to be. 
Yeah. And there's nothing around, like, bro, I promise you when I tell you, nothing offends me. Like, life is supposed to be fun. Like, yeah. it's okay, bro. Yeah, like, that's good. That's good. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, come on, I promise you, them, them hairlines ain't that sharp for nothing. I know. Ain't nobody <laughs> hairline that sharp. If you start watching sitcoms and you see the most razor sharp, yeah. trust me. It I know. Human hair ain't that sharp, bro. I know. I'm like, damn, you could just your joint cut every second, what? every moment. You know? That's what's up, Yeah, man. it's just about looking good, feeling good. That's yeah. what it boils down to. That's good, man. Yo, man, I just want to say thanks for coming up. Nah, appreciate you, know what you mean? as always. Now, we got to do this again when you do the album. Cause I got, I'm already planning for your album, so nah, we bro. got, we got to figure something out. You gonna love this album, bro? Yeah, I promise you. I That's promise this album is gonna change the game. Good, good, I good. I promise. You. All right, thank you, man. Man, thank you, yeah. bro.